overflows identity crisis and social attributes first the sutras of nirvan shatkam namrityur shanka name jati bheda namrityur na shanka name jati bheda pita naiv me naiv mata na janma पिता नैव मे नैव माता न जन्म न बंधुर्मित्र गुरुर्न शिष्य न बंधुर्मित्र गुरुर्न शिष्य चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद शिवो हम शिवो हम न मृत्योर न शंका न मे जाति भेदा पिता नैव मे नैव माता न जन्म न बंधुर्मित्र गुरुर्न शिष्य चिदानंद शिवो हम शिवो हम अहम निर्विकल्पो निराकार रूपो अहम निर्विकल्पो निराकार रूपो विभुक्तवाच्य सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रिया विभुक्तवाच्य सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रिया न चास्य संगत नक्तिर्न मेय न चास्य संगत नक्तिर्न मेय चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम अहम निर्विकल्पो निराकार रूपो विभुक्तवाच्य सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रिया न चास्य संगत नक्तिर्न मेय चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवो identity crisis is one of the basic problem in the process of transformation and enlightenment each one of us knows deep within that life is eternal it is beginningless and endless beyond beginning and end both but we do not search in deep within however you search outward in vain search deep within so that this trust this process becomes a witness in your life this process of transforming death and life into a moment of eternity and then living life overflowing such awakening each moment is the essence of life eternal or enlightenment know this alone as religiosity you are the embodiment of truth consciousness and bliss sat chit anand ever existing ever consciousness ever new bliss this is your essential nature however this essential nature a true self remains covered by bio psycho and social self and we always attribute to one of them as our real self and more so the problem becomes complicated when these overlap over overlap to one another 
the biological attributes like I am strong, I am short, I am fat, I am tall, etc. Psychological attributes I am genius, I am dull, I am emotional, I am rational. Social attributes like I am a father, I am a teacher, I am a doctor, I am a politician and then you identify yourself with your religion, with your place of birth, with your caste, with your creed and nation. But these are not your real identity. Yet, these when they are they overlap one another, it creates more complication. Nirvan is difficult to describe in words. However, Nirvan is described as freedom. It is like the space which was in enclosed within the man, the humanly created boundaries. Like the space in your room, it is surrounded by the walls and windows. When you keep these windows and doors closed, you become an island. But man is not an island. He is a vast openness. So this is how your identity is, like a closed room where nothing, no light comes from outside, nothing happens, like a prison cell. And the moment these walls are, are broken, the inner space merges with the outer space. This in Sufism, it says that the drop merging in the ocean and when it happens simultaneously the inner space merges in the outer space and outer space merges into the inner space because two become one there is no barrier between them the same happens between human beings you are and you are living in your own prison cells surrounded by your different identities so there can be no union between male and female between lover and beloved between spouses the moment these boundaries are no more there is a vast openness all the boundaries are no more then you stand completely stripped of your identities and then bliss can happen. So Nirvana is described as freedom from any kind of bondage, freedom from duality, which Shankar uses the two words in pairs and neither this nor that. You are beyond all these neither cold nor heat. You are half man, half woman, but you consider yourself as a man or a woman. Psychologically, you are the blend of the two. When you are free from all bondages, this state is formless and the entire composition of Nirvan Shatkam is described, describes this process. You do not want to be either this or that. If you don't want to be this nor that, what do you want to be? That is transcendence. Your mind cannot understand this because mind can. Mind always wants to be something. It is a doer. It says, I do not want to do this. I do not want to do that. The Sutra says, Namrityur na shanka na me jati bheda neither i am bound by death nor its and its fear nor by the rules of caste and its distinctions neither do i have father nor mother nor do i have birth 
neither do I have relations nor friends, because far parents are the passage through which child is born into the world. They belong, they do not belong to the parents. I am neither a spiritual teacher nor disciple, because this is a game, master and disciple. I am ever blissful, pure consciousness. This is explained through the word Shiva. I am Shi, Shiv, O, Hum, Shivo, Hum. I am pure blissful consciousness. I have no fear of death, no cost, no caste or creed. I have no father, no mother, for I was never born. If you were never born, how can you have father? I am not a relative, nor a friend, nor a teacher, nor a student. I am the form of consciousness and bliss. I am eternal Shiva. The last sutra says, Aham nirvikalpo nirakar rupo vibhutto vach sarvatra sarvendriyanam Aham nirvikalpo means without any variations and without any form. Nirakar, without any form. I am present everywhere, all pervading as the underlying spratum of everything and behind all sense organs. You see the sense organs but not the operating principle behind it. You see the hardware in your computer. You see the keyboard, what, what operates behind it. You do not see. I am ever pure blissful consciousness. Shivo hum. Shiva O Ham, I am Shiva, Shiva that is my pure nature, ever pure blissful consciousness. I am devout of duality. My form is formless. You see the form, but the form operates on a principle which is formless. Your eyes work on the inner capacity of seeing, the ears, the inner hearing. And this is why in one of the Upanishads, the important prayer is, may I hear that is worth hearing. So there is an outer ears and inner ears. The outer ear hears. And along with this, so many other things are brought in. Listening is the art of, is a different art. Nanak emphasizes on listening and in his Japji he gave so many examples, so many sutras to explain the art of listening. I am devout of duality, my form is formlessness. I exist everywhere, pervading all senses. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the touch, the skin. I am neither attached, neither free nor captive, neither free nor captive. My nature is of pure consciousness, never born, never dies. I am Shivoham. The absolute consciousness that was in the beginning, that is now and will always be. This is all pervading consciousness. I am eternal Shiva. Aham, aham nirvikalpo nirakar rupo vibhutta vacha sarvatra sarvendriyanam nachasya sangatam Naiva Muktir Nameyo Meya Chidanand Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham Enough for now.